Growth must come from innovation and innovation in new sectors of the economy. Maybe some high technology manufacturing, it may be new services, it may be creative industries. We need innovation for long term growth and innovation requires talented people and talented people come from all around the globe. If you put immigration controls up now, you may be affecting innovation and long term growth in the future. Migration and immigration into the UK has been very good for the UK economy. It's helped employment, it's helped growth. It's helped the labour market work more efficiently. It's provided tax revenue. And it's been particularly an important source of innovation because when you bring people together from different cultures, you often find that they collaborate more, they develop ideas, they learn from each other, and it helps the economy grow. As well, of course, as providing like, many social and cultural benefits. If we look at many of the most thriving economies, they've often depended a lot on labour from abroad. If we look at economic migrants from Europe at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, they went to North America. Uh, and, the United, and, and there were problems, of course, but the United States economy was built very much on the 20, in the 20th century on immigration and migrant labour. And it helped really the, the American economy to grow. Even if we look now, Silicon Valley, one of the hubs of innovation, really depends on getting a lot of talent from abroad. Talent from abroad, which can help both the American economy grow and the world economy grow. And we shouldn't forget where we're sitting now. We're sitting in Cambridge, and Cambridge really depends on a global labour market. It depends for its success, both as a university and as a high technology centre, of attracting people from all around the globe. Once you start putting controls on migration, you may actually affect, adversely affect economic growth and innovation in the future. I think it is a knee-jerk reaction to, to, to the current uh, crisis. What we're seeing is rising unemployment, a recession. It's too easy to blame immigration as a cause of that problem. It's not. Immigration has helped their, our economy grow, and immigration has not been a cause of the recession. It's too easy to blame immigrants for the rise in unemployment. Unemployment was caused by other reasons, a global recession and the government's policy response. And we must remember, many of these people who have come in from abroad pay a lot of taxes. And if we put a curb on immigration, it's going to have an adverse effect on the exchequer. You see, the most innovative places often depend on workers coming from different cultural backgrounds with different ideas. And it's actually the exchange of ideas between people from different backgrounds and different communities that often generates the most innovative places. Places in North America, places in Europe and places in the UK. They often depend on a wide scale labour market, on getting people from abroad as well as from the UK together. And what's important is developing communities where there is trust and tolerance, because trust and tolerance helps ideas to be exchanged, helps innovation and growth in the future. We see that now and we see that through periods of history as well. It does take a long time, but we do know some pretty robust evidence about what, what causes trust and tolerance in different places. We, need, we see this in Europe and North America. One of the most important things is education. The higher the level of education, people are more trusting and tolerant of others from different backgrounds. And that's very important in the innovation and growth process. The other thing we notes, notice about places is where you have a place where you have a stable community, people are not moving in and out all the time, you get people investing more in that place. They get investing more in community engagement, and that helps trust and tolerance. So trust and tolerance are very important sources of growth and innovation. And we also need to bear in mind is places with large, a large level of trust and tolerance also generate more benefits in terms of education but also health and low levels of crime. It's very important to generate trust and tolerance not only for economic benefits but for social benefits as well. It is about social capital. Social capital is a, is a sort of a rather ugly term but social capital is about trust and tolerance and community engagement and these things are very important. We need to be building trusting and tolerant places because that will help communities generate economic growth, it will help innovation but as I say it will also generate social benefits where you will have lower levels of crime, better health care and better communities full stop.